I trained for two hours. Train my man right here. He's capturing everything. We got it on the internet. We got thousands of people all over the world that do the workouts from all over, up to 100 countries. And then I'm at the track lunge and a half mile. And then I'm listening to personal development. If you want my spot, are you willing to do that? I will take your spot. That's the way I think about it. So I went pro in my passion. I wasn't a, I'm not a player, but I still went pro in what, in my sport. Because I'm willing to do what the next guy's not willing to do because I'm, I'm, I'm not that great of an athlete. The only reason why I got records now is because I outlasted everybody. Because now I'm in my 40s and dudes can't really mess with me. I just squatted the second biggest number in uh, let's see, the 40 to 40 year old division, like I said, it takes a little while. 181 pounds. Jay can talk about this because he knows what's up. 694 pounds at 181. No, I don't look like it, but I'm a dog in the bar. I'll tell you that for real. I've been competing since I was 17 years old. And so, but it took me years to get to that point. Once again, it's what I'm willing to do. So why not me? Where's my, what level is my discipline at? Is there somebody right now that wants to take these millions from me? They're going to have to really come get it because I'm not ready to give it up yet. And so you guys got to think that same way about your spot on this team or if you're trying to play at the next level. How do I separate myself? I love the shot. Because when they put me in, I'm the guy that wants the ball. Because I've, I've put so much work in to be here, it's not fake. You guys will read in this book. It's an easy read. I, I didn't even read a book in high school. I couldn't even probably got into a school. I was like a 2.1 GPA. I got a 13 on my ACT, guys. I got nothing to hide. I'm, I, that, the academic shit wasn't there. But I'm a beast out here, and it's worked. So what happens when you have all these skills? What happens when you've got these opportunities? I didn't have the college experience. I went to Columbus State one year. I started my business when I was like barely 20 years old. For $4,000, I started a personal training studio. And at 21, I'm painting the walls in my own gym. And I was making $20 for overtime as a coal miner. And Irene paid me $20 to teach her how to do bicep curls. I'm already successful at that point. To me, I was already winning. All this other stuff that's happened, shit. It was just a plus. At 20, I went from being in the coal mine to boom, now somebody's paying me to lift weights at a job I didn't even think was possible. So where's the discipline at? How can I separate myself? Oh, who do I want to be? Who do I want to be and work backwards? Where do you see yourself? You know where I see myself? Exactly where I'm at right now. Exactly. Of course, I want to shoot higher and maybe I shoot here and I get here. Sometimes I'm hitting things out the park I didn't even think was possible. You know, it's one of those things where you dream that these things can happen. You think about maybe playing in the league. Maybe it ain't the league. Maybe it's just your profession. Not just be good in your local market. I'm trying to be one of the best in my industry. No, I don't live in Cali. No, I don't live in New York. I didn't have to. I still became business partners with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I still build four multi-million dollar businesses from scratch, living in Ohio. I'm on the east side of Columbus in Granville now. But we started off downtown and kept working our way out. Having the business now, I figure I'm 44, I've been in business almost 24 years. Now when people say that sometimes, I'm telling you my last W-2 actual paycheck was from an AEP coal mine. Ever since then, lifting weights has paid every bill. But Every rolly, rolls, houses, all of it. And guess what? That shit is cool. And I, when I'm living in that trailer, that's everything I wanted. And you should go get that stuff. But the reality is every day I get up and I love what I do. And that right there was the key. My parents hated their job. And they struggled so bad. And I was just like, this is not for me. Why not me? Why, did, why is this, this cat get a chance to do it? Why can't I do it? And so I kept asking myself these questions to help like, propel myself because I would get down on myself and things would be hard, but I just keep asking myself these things. All right. One of the stories I want to tell you guys is when I was 36, I started squatting every day. Do front squat variations, back squat variations, all this crazy stuff. I did it for three years straight. That's how I got a lot of these numbers. 
I ended up doing 540, 181, uh, raw back squat, 550, 198, and then the whole crazy suits and the whole nine is when I did, I've done 700 multiple times, and that's 694 just recently. Along that process, I shot a thing on bodybuilding.com. It was called Squat Every Day Trainer. They said, hey, they came to me, and they, I, I had another supplement company at the time that was pretty big. We were a major sponsor in the UFC. It's called Muscle Farm. I had Tiger Woods. I had Arnold Schwarzenegger. I had everybody, basically. We was the Nike of the space. So I got a chance to shoot Squat Every Day Trainer on Bodybuilding.com. It does like 50 million page views. Kills it. Separates me from every, bit, every other dude. Not because I'm a great lifter. Just because I'm different in what I'm willing to go through. And then I get an opportunity. Now, when I grew up, I told you guys I grew up in a trailer. Well, my homie down the street I played basketball with, his parents were entrepreneurs and they had a little bit of money. And he was six, he ended up being 6'6", six, six, like 240. So when D. Brown in the 90s hit this dunk and had these Reebok pumps, I wanted them so bad. There's no way my mom could afford them. I bought them at his yard sale three years later used. I, w I didn't even stress it though. I was like, I want these pumps so bad. Well, I happened to wear a Reebok shoe in that squat every day trainer. And Reebok saw it. And I was getting non-crossfitters to wear an Olympic lifting shoe for better position. And they came to me and Reebok offered me a $40,000 shoe deal as a 36 year old athlete. You know what I said? Hey, do you guys make those pumps? Because when I come up there to Massachusetts to sign that shoe deal, how about you go ahead and send them to me? And I'm gonna wear these motherfuckers when I sign that paper. <laughs> because I had to buy these at my homie's yard sale, but now I'm at Reebok and they're giving them to me $1,000 a month in gear and 40,000 to lift weights. Because I was willing to do something different and I was willing to put myself out there. So this is what I'm trying to tell you guys that I saw things happen in my wildest dreams I didn't think was possible. People thought I was out here being crazy, but I kept pushing, I kept asking myself these things, and that's how I got here. One other quick story, and then I'm gonna throw it to D. So, whenever we were, uh, I was on a golf course with some of the old investors from the old company, and the one guy said, hey, would you guys be interested in working with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Everybody knows who Arnold is, right? That's the goat. Every, any football player you guys look up to, Arnold's that guy for us. So I get a chance to meet Arnold and go up to Santa Monica and get, and get a chance to pitch him to be my business partner. So at that time, I was pushing real hard and I, I had been on 13 different covers of magazines, but that one specifically was a, was a killer. And I didn't even think to bring it to the meeting, but it was at every airport in the US, all the bookstores the whole night. So I'm getting a chance to pitch Arnold and he sits down First off, he don't even look real. It's like MJ to me. It's like Tiger. I mean, it's, it's all of those guys wrapped up. He sits down and he goes, why would I do this with, this with you guys? I wouldn't do this with GNC. I wouldn't do this with these guys, blah, blah, blah. And, I, and I, right off the bat, I said, kids are texting in the gym. They're not utilizing the workouts, Arnold. I knew he owned Pumping Iron, which is the famous documentary. And I said, let me get a hold of that. I think I know how to market it. We'll wrap the programs together. I've already had success on these other programs. We can write them together. And we can get everybody doing this stuff again. So during the meeting, the investor throws him this, right? And I'm like, this is me and my kids. Never been done before. He throws him this. And I didn't even think to bring it. I couldn't believe it. But luckily, he bought it at the airport. He throws it to him. And he looks at it. And he goes, all right, this is cool. And then he sees our gym. Because the layout was in our gym. It's called Old School Gym. It's private now, it's invite only, that's why we let D-Lo in there, <laughs> that's our guy. But it's a hardcore 1970s real gym. This ain't Planet Fitness bullshit, it's real. You gotta be about it. That's why Jake loved it so much Ooh. too, because he's about it. Dirty. He knows, he knows, it's the 4 a.m. crew. So halfway through the meeting, you know, he's looking at the gym, he's seeing all this, and then he hits him like this, the pull-out poster. Boom, Arnold's looking at me. And he goes, oh, your abs kind of look like this Frank Zane guy. This is like an OG, like 70s guy I used to follow. And right now I'm like this, hit myself in the head like, what is happening right now? <laughs> but I was supposed to be there and I wasn't nervous because I had built confidence with all these hours of work, all these hours of belief. I knew I was coming out of there with that man being my business partner. 
Still to this day, I get to go to his house at Christmas. This business is long gone now. You know, I just act like I'm supposed to be there once Stallone walks through and all these heavy hitters, Owen Wilson, whatever. I'm just over at the cigar table chilling. Can't believe I did this. So I just want you guys to know, like, these things that you'll read in this book, super easy read, the questions that I ask myself, the things that have happened to me are truly remarkable. And I can't even believe I come home every day from the gym. I pull up to the crib. I still can't even believe it sometimes. I, I tell the all this, I can't believe it worked. I can't believe it worked. So I just want you guys to know that there's a lot of opportunities out there. I know you know you need to work hard. I know you guys got some great coaches. It seems like everything I've seen down here. But you're seeing right here, we're living our dream, doing what we love every day. We weren't good enough to play anything, but we're good enough to go pro still in our passion. So, thank you guys. Man, what an inspiration, huh? Now, give, give him another round. Now, me and G grew up together, and I'm going to tell you, he's always been like this. Even before he had the, the business and the Rolex and everything else to, to back it up. So it's been pretty awesome to, to be a part of it and to watch. Now, we grew up lifting weights together. Yeah, I think we met when we were 15, so couldn't even drive yet. And then we've been able to be in business, you know, for um, basically 20 years now together. You know, when I graduated from Ohio State, my first job was going into business with him as a personal trainer. And then we opened our first gym, you know, shortly after. So I've never had a W-2 from anywhere. I've always got paid to lift weights and train athletes. You know, so between the, the old school gym, now with Max Effort Muscle, I mean, we've been able to kind of turn, like he said, turn our passion into a business. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself just so you have some context, you know, about what I'm most well known for, and that's for, for training athletes. You know, I train, you know, UFC Hall of Famers, NFL players, but I'm most well known for training wrestlers. I'm the strength coach at the Ohio Regional Training Center at Ohio State, and I served as the primary strength coach for OSU from 2014 to 2018. And during that time we won, you know, the only team uh, national title in school history and won three Big Ten titles. I coached a bunch of All-Americans. I trained guys that wrestled in the Olympics and all that stuff. So anyway, I wanted to just kind of tell you that just to give you some context so maybe I can share some stuff um, with you guys about myself, about the way I approach things, about the way I approach life that's helped me, that, that maybe some of you you know, can identify with. Um, so the first thing is, you know, you've got to embrace, you know, being the underdog. You know, where we're from, you know, we, I grew up outside of Stoneville, and it's, uh, is it anyone here from the Valley? What's up, man? OBAC in the house, right? And, you know, the Valley's the type of place, when you're from there, you're already kind of born with a chip on your shoulder. You have to kind of embrace being the underdog if you're going to get out of there and, you know, make something of yourself. And that was something from day one I knew I had to do because not only... You know, I'm from Stoneville, but I'm also, you know, I was born, I was small, I was the smallest kid in class, I was little, wasn't very athletic, you know, so I had to start, I couldn't wait to start lifting weights with my dad in the garage so I could get bigger and feel better about myself, feel stronger, feel more confident. I knew it was something I had to do if I was going to get anywhere, you know, like not even, I wasn't at that time even thinking from a professional standpoint, but just as a man, I'm like, I, can, I need to get strong, I need to be big, I got to embrace being the underdog and pour myself into it. And I'm sure that some of you can identify with that. Maybe you've been the underdog in life, whether you're from a place like I'm from out in the country or whether you're from the hood or wherever, or maybe, you know, growing up, you know, people tell you, oh, you know, yeah, you're a good football player, but maybe you're, you're a little too short to go D1. Or, you know, maybe maybe you hear the chatter now, like, hey, you guys got a good team this year, but uh, you're not gonna beat Penn State. You're not gonna beat Iowa State. You know, these are the type of things that people say. And it's one thing for people to say those things. It's another thing for you to internalize them and start saying them to yourself. And it's easy to do because then you stop going from being the underdog to now you're just an underachiever, you know, because you start putting these limitations on yourself. You start listening to the chatter and now you think like, okay, well, that's, that's what our ceiling is. We can't beat Penn State. Or maybe, you know, maybe I'm not good enough to go to D1 or whatever, whatever the case may be. Nah, fuck that. You've got to embrace being the underdog. And you've got to think, just like Corey said, why not me? Why not us? You know, anything is possible in life. Anything's possible in a game any type of situations, you just gotta be willing to put forth the effort and make it happen. Now, I know the, the first game's in what, two weeks? Yeah, so high school football starts this weekend, right, here in Ohio. 
So think about every one of those kids here in Ohio playing high school ball that are dreaming of sitting in these seats. You know, this is their dream, big time football. Yeah, I mean, D1 athlete. And not too long ago, that was you guys. You guys were in their shoes. And that's probably been the dream for a long time. You probably thought, I'm gonna do anything to get there, you know? But then, before you know it, you're here, and it's easy for the moments to just slip by and to lose them. So that kind of brings me to our next point, is you gotta recognize how unique and special all these moments are when you're in them. You know, when you get to, when you get to suit up with that green on, you get to run out, you know, with the, this is the oldest university in the state, you get to represent it, you get to run out on the field. Or even days like today where you get the you know, knowledge broken down to you by, by D'Angelo, you know, by Coach Smith to stand up here and teaching you guys how unique and special these moments are. Because when you, I remember I was when I was young, when you're young, it's easy to think, oh, well, once you're in it, like these moments, are, there's so many of them. But then you get old like me and you realize you only get a couple. It's a, it's a, it's a short slice of your life. And before you know it, they're gone. You know what I mean? So you gotta be in the moment, recognize how unique and special they are when you run out on the field. So what I want you guys to do when it's opening day and you get the suit up and you're with your teammates, and you're under the bright lights and you get the round there, you're on TV, whatever it is, ask yourself, how do you want that day to be remembered? How do you want to, how do you want to remember it? But more importantly, how do you want Coach Smith to remember it? How do you want your parents to remember the game in those moments? How do you want your friends back home or your girlfriend, whoever, how do you want them to remember those moments? The best part about it is you get to dictate how it's remembered by everyone else because you get to choose the amount of effort you put into those moments. You can choose to give max effort at all times. A little plug for the company right there. <laughs> it's the one thing that's really under, you know, that's under your control. You know, I didn't, it would have been easy for me when I first got my foot in the door at Ohio State, they said, man, you know, I didn't, you know, I wasn't even a state qualifier in high school. How can I ever, how could I help Ohio State win their first national title? How could I do that? You know, I'm, I'm just an average athlete, average wrestler, whatever. It would have been easy for me to think that way. But I knew if I just gave max effort and how special those situations were, that I would be able to make a difference. And you guys can do that same thing. So then, you know, somewhere down the line when you're an old 43-year-old man like me and you go to the family reunion, and your uncle talks about that opening day game in 22, or talks about the Penn State game, you're going to be proud of the way they remember it because of the effort you gave. That's all I got for you.